Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Noelle and I'm here with another shoe review. I received the Adidas Ultra Boost X, I think towards the end of February. So um, I've had it for about a month now. And um, yeah, this is the standard colorway that the women's version arrives in. And I will be showing you a bit more in-depth footage um, coming up. So, let me just read to you what Adidas has told me about this product. Boost has been around for quite some time and of course competing brands have uh, released their own responses to this technology. But um, Adidas still touts itself as the first and the best when it comes to really good cushioning and energy return right so the the purpose of this review is to tell you whether or not the new ultra boost x is an improvement over previous versions of the ultra boost the ventilation holes of the original ultra boost return to the upper across the foot's key sweat zones the cage and forefoot and then the new prime knit construction is supposed to have reduced stretch to provide runners with a prime fit and additional support. So you will see that in the heel counter. Normally most heel counters just go straight across this part of the heel. But this time the heel counter is split down like this. So this allows the Achilles tendon which actually extends to the bottom of your heel to move a bit more freely. Hmm. Obviously, you know, I'm not a very technical person and I don't really keep up with uh, all of the technical breakthroughs and technology innovations that shoe brands uh, come up with per iteration of their footwear. What really matters to me is how comfortable the shoe is and how it helps me run at my best. And so I use the Ultra Boost X for a month starting from when I used the shoe in an Adidas runners Manila session which was actually a speed session going up a hill at the Bonifacio Greenway and you know that was really like first impressions of the shoe and I share them with you in this video Welcome to the Welcome speed to the session. Night. We normally have our boost run and then uh, we have our speed session every Wednesdays. For the first timers here, please raise your hand. Thank you, Kai Runner. Hello. Also, Hello. thank you for joining and trying out the newest Ultra Boost X. So I heard very good reviews. This is my first run session outdoors in a long while. <laughs> Josh, Hi. one of my avid readers, yuck. <laughs> Tonight I'm trying out the new Ultra Boost, um, Ultra Boost X. So, um, for the first um, few hundred meters, it feels a lot like the old Ultra Boost X all terrain that I've been wearing, but I'll see how it performs as we go through tonight's speed session. Uh, when was the last speed session I ever did? Oh, maybe last year? Um, the softness of the boost cushioning is... It's like Goldilocks. It's just right. Um, the, the shoe itself is still very responsive and it's really quite light. So uh, you can notice it um, during speed sessions like this one where you want to put on a burst of speed and the shoe actually lets you do it. Yes. 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 Probably the only con that I can think of is that right now the shoe is just a little bit tight around the arch and forefoot area but with my previous experience from this kind of shoe it usually loosens by 
a few runs in so I'm not too worried about the comfort level Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go for my cool down I think they've already started um, I'll check back in after a few weeks of using these shoes Obviously, the Ultra Boost and the Ultra Boost X are different in that the Ultra Boost X has a floating, well, I like to call it floating, but it's called an, an adaptive arch by Adidas. Between the first, um, the introduction of this adaptive arch and this current iteration of the Ultra Boost X, they've actually made some changes. It feels like the arch is a bit lower to the shoe and it doesn't move as much these days versus let's say when they introduced this adaptive arch in the Pure Boost X it really felt like the arch was a bit more freely moving and it felt like your foot would slide off the shoe sideways in this iteration yeah your foot is secure here you'll see that the foot base, the shoe base is actually wide enough so that even if your foot slides sideways, um, it won't come off the shoe completely. Also, this prime knit holds your foot in place even if it looks deceptively pliable. Like it's just fabric but it's actually not. This is actually the first time I'm running in an Ultra Boost X with the cut as low as this one. I already have the Ultra Boost X 80R, which had a higher cut like this. Hmm? I did notice with the previous Ultra Boost X 80R that the prime knit kind of started feeling a lot more comfortable towards the end of my testing period. Um, I don't know if it was because the prime knit had, you know, given a little and had molded to my foot a little. I think it's that's really how it's supposed to work. And so with the prime knit of the Ultra Boost X that I received, I was kind of waiting for it also to, you know, have a little more give towards the end of the testing period, and it did that. But it never lost the quality of being somewhat a fully wraparound um, shoe. Like, it, it really felt many times like I was wearing two pairs of socks rather than a pair of socks and then shoes over it. That's how snug it felt. It was very comforting um, to know that your shoe isn't going to come off your foot. But at the same time, for those of us um, who like to wear their shoes a little bit more loosely, um, that, uh, that upper across the arches was a little unforgiving. Um, it, you can see that there isn't really a tongue section here. It's really one piece construction and the laces seem to be there a little bit more for decoration rather than for real structural functions. There's a bit more build up across these three stripes. There's a bit more, um, I would say that it cups it a little bit more and then the top of the shoe stays on there. It doesn't really stretch that much, or if it does stretch, you do feel that resistance. Um, so for me, I like a little bit of play going up and down like this in my shoe. Um, it didn't really provide for that. Overall though, this prime knit is super breathable. I, I never felt like my foot was getting hot or com uncomfortable inside. Um, it really helped like um, if if there was any moisture buildup it was never contained inside the shoe because of this prime knit so everything just evaporated away quite quickly I used it yes I used it on a beach I did get the shoe wet when I stepped into a puddle but that didn't really translate to the inside of the shoe I didn't feel any dampness inside when I stepped in the puddle and of course, you know, after a few kilometers of running, the shoe was, again, dry. Yeah, when I took the shoes off, they didn't really have any dampness in the inside of it. Except for this heel cup. Because the heel cup is a bit more cushioned. It's got this cushioning here. It's got cushioning here. It did feel a little bit more damp than the rest of the shoe. So, 
uh, I had to air it out for a bit before putting it back in storage. I did mention that I like to wear the shoe very, some of my shoes very loosely, and this the Ultra Boost X didn't allow me to do that with this shoe because of the overall wraparound knit construction. Um, I eventually did adapt to that feeling and uh, was very good to run in but sometimes it could get a bit tight especially if my foot started to expand towards the end of a long run and then in particular my right foot got crampy and this happened maybe two out of how many sessions did I run in this shoe? 15 sessions. Two out of 15 sessions this happened to me and it was probably because um, I was clawing my foot a little bit. It was probably subconscious uh, and it's not something that I normally do with my shoes. Differences between the Adidas Ultra Boost X and the Ultra Boost X 80R. There aren't really a lot of differences, but I will show you the two shoes side by side. So these are the two pairs of shoes, the Adidas Ultra Boost X and the Ultra Boost X 80R. The Ultra Boost X 80R has a bit of a higher cut, you'll see this, and it's meant to keep things out of the shoe versus the Ultra Boost X, which has a lower cut and a more stylish cut, if I do say so. Uh, this one is the one that I feel would best translate from performance to lifestyle. Like if you're coming from the gym and you're going to go straight to um, a girl's brunch, you can still wear this. You'll notice that the Ultra Boost X 80R is a bit beefier with the sole. Uh, and this is a continental outsole. Um, it's a bit different because this continental outsole looks like it's got like little crosses on it versus the continental outsole of the Ultra Boost X which has a bit more of a rounded nub. Yeah? You will see that the sole of the Ultra Boost X 80R is just a bit thicker. The Boost sole is just a bit thicker than the Ultra Boost X. And the Ultra Boost X 80R has this, this cage, right? But then the Ultra Boost X doesn't have that cage. Right, so this really expects that you're gonna take it on uneven terrain just a bit, but this one expects that you're running in a more urban environment. Both of them still do have that um, that heel counter which allows room for the Achilles to move. The tech between these two shoes, they're the same. <laughs> so yeah, if you already have this, you might be less inclined to get this. And if you get this, I'm not sure if you're actually someone who runs in all-terrain conditions anyway. Maybe one thing to note is that the prime knit for the Ultra Boost X is just a little bit different from the prime knit of the Ultra Boost X all-terrain. I do feel like um, my all-terrain it's just a bit softer across the um, the top of the foot versus the um, the Ultra Boost, which just feels a little bit more built up across here. So you might find you might feel that difference at some point. It's really quite snug. It's a it's a sock that molds to your foot, and some people really like that, and some people don't. So it's really up to you what kind of runner you are. To sum up, I really loved running in the Adidas Ultra Boost X and I ran in these Ultra Boost Xs to fulfill the takbo.ph Women's Stride Virtual Run uh, requirements. So I had signed up for a 50 kilometer virtual run which means that from March 1 to 31 I had to complete a total mileage of 50 kilometers and these were the shoes that I ran in for all of those kilometers and I have to say that uh, it was one of the best months of running that I've had because every time I put these shoes on I just felt on top of the world 
Just a little note that I didn't run further than 10k in any one of those run sessions. So sometimes your foot feels great in shoes for short distances, but then it changes as the distances get longer. I did feel towards the end of the 10k that my foot was kind of swelling. This usually happens the longer you run. And the prime knit was getting a little snug. I'm not sure if the prime knit will give to to let you run longer sessions. Like maybe if you run long sessions, then this will adjust to your foot as well and will expand to give you more room to run those long sessions in. I know that the Ultra Boost X 80R was a really good shoe to run 21K in. Like it was super comfortable and I didn't feel any joint aches at the end because you know the boost really um, gave me that much cushioning and uh like i said this soft knit allowed my foot to expand in the shoe so maybe that's gonna happen in this ultra boost x i probably won't know unless i run longer than 10k in these shoes uh but i will let you know what happens then very responsive shoe when it comes to change up in speed like, I never felt that my foot got stuck on the ground really long. If I had to pick up to the speed, I just, you know, told my legs to go and they went. Sometimes with a very, very cushioned shoe, you're going to feel like um, it's a bit more leaden when you try to peel your foot up off the ground faster. This one had no issues. Um, actually, the only barriers between me and running faster was me myself <laughs> didn't really feel motivated to run any faster and if i did um i didn't feel too great so which is a function more of fitness rather than the shoe okay this shoe is a bit pricey yeah it's almost ten thousand pesos so it is an investment shoe and would i buy it yes but it would be the only shoe i would buy for that entire year um, I would probably have an older shoe that I would rotate with it okay so that does it for my review of the Adidas Ultra Boost X if you like this review please give it a thumbs up if you haven't yet please subscribe to my channel I usually come out with a new video every week whether it's reviews or events or even my own travel vlogs I always have something new for you so I hope you've been enjoying them so far Thanks guys! See you next time!